friends, it's Crispy with the Saskatoon Public Library coming to you from Treaty 6 territory. I'm excited today for Fix It Fridays because uh, I don't know if you have at your house, but at our house we have a lot of these sort of headphones and sometimes they get broken. Ugh. So for example, look at this, look at this headphone. Um, so you can see the audio wire is still intact. The audio wire is still intact, but the plastic part is broken. So here's one of the fixes that I've done in the past. You can see this color. So what I used previously, this is um, a piece of yogurt container. So I've cut some strips off the yogurt container. This was my easy fix. So what I did was I lined up my pieces. Then I used my yogurt container and some tape. And here's the tape. Uh, and I just wrapped it around there to make this, uh, the tape is peeling, but this sort of, oops, it's a little bit flexible. It's a little bit flexible, but it's still, oh, but it's still working. I don't know why that's closed. Okay, but it's still um, usable. So here's my new method for fixing. So, on this one, I've drilled some holes. So the things I'm going to use today are some wire. I'm going to use my drill. I have some epoxy. This is 15 minute epoxy, but you could use five minute epoxy uh, or whatever epoxy you have. I like epoxy because it makes this thick layer um, and that makes it a little bit more secure. Look how it's like a regular headphone fit. I'm also going to use some mica powder. So this is some bronze gold mica powder. Um, yeah, those are all the things. So the easy fix for this is just to take some tape and some plastic, whatever you have in the recycling would work. Here's some plastic. Because you're going to try and um, reinforce that break. So you're going to want to get this um, little join in there so it's secure and doesn't have much flex to it. But what I found that works even better is a little bit of epoxy. So now what I'm going to do, oh, yeah. so now what I'm going to do is I have the tiniest drill bit on my drill here. Now you don't have to drill if you don't want to, if you don't have a drill. You could always just uh, do this by hand. You can just actually use your drill bit by hand and drill it. This is a 160, uh, 11 64th inch bit. It's my smallest bit in this little set. The biggest thing that you're gonna wanna do when you're fixing this is the wire goes down through this plastic. I don't wanna drill through the wire because that will break the headphones. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully, I'm going to drill. just through the plastic bit. And I'm gonna drill three holes. Oh, I might drill four. Three holes down one side. You can see that there. And then, so my wire is still, it was way over to this side. You can see my three holes in the wire was over here. So now I'm gonna move the wire to the other side and I'm gonna drill one more hole way on this side. Again, I do not wanna drill through the wire because then my headphones would stop working. On the other side, I have a little plasticky bit and my wire is way down out of the way here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna drill close to the edge, but not so close that I want to, that it's gonna crack. Because it's hard plastic, it might crack. So I don't want that to happen. Okay, so there's four little holes in both sides. I'm just gonna knock off any extra plastic. Okay, do you see that? All right, next, get ready here. We're going to, um, I have some tapes, which I may cover it with afterwards, but I'm going to need a little tape to use 
because my epoxy takes 15 minutes to set. So while it's setting, I don't want it to move. So I'm just going to have a couple pieces of tape ready to use as extra hands to use as braces to keep it from shifting. So I'm just sticking these to my table so they're ready to use. Now epoxy is a plastic so my epoxy here you have to mix equal parts hardener with uh, Hang on, we're gonna mix that in just a second. First, I wanna get my wire ready. So I have a couple wire options. Oops. So I have a galvanized steel wire and I have a little jewelry stainless steel wire. Uh, I just got these at the craft store. They actually have them at the dollar store too. So the trickiest part of using wire is finding the end of the wire. Ooh. Finding the end of the wire. Oh dear. I can't do. Well, today we're going to make a big mess of this wire. I'm just going to steal this chunk from the middle. Oh, nope. Okay. Just going to cut off a piece of wire. Now I want my wire to be a little bit long because what I'm going to do is thread it through all of the little holes that I drilled. So, there you go. here's my skinny wire. Straighten it all out. Nice long wire. Oops. Okay. Now, I'm going to lace it through these holes. Look at this one that I've done already. I'm going to lace it through the holes and then I'm going to wrap it across and add extra epoxy. So first thing I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of epoxy because I do want it to stick to you. Hello, while Crispy continues her repair on the headphones, I'm going to show you a few different spots in the library that you can find uh, resources that kind of match what she's working on. So when I went to look into this, I did some searches in our catalog online first, and I found two books that we had here at Carlisle King Library that seemed pretty appropriate. So I'm in the nonfiction section, so you can see the sign up here. And the first book I found said it was in the section 643. So I'll have to go down this one and walk down until I find the numbers on the side that start 643. And I'm looking for a maintenance book. So all the books around this book are gonna be about DIY maintenance and repair. So here's the book I wanted to show you. The library has lots of different books on everyday home repair. And this one in particular is really nice. It's called Easy Fixes. So some quick little things you can do at home uh, to repair everyday items. So this is by Reader's Digest. And the call number was 643.602. And that's what I found it on the shelf. So that's resource number one. The second resource is in a different section. It's in 363 and all the books around it are about sustainable living and environmental protection. So this book would be further down and I would keep walking until I found the, find the section for 363. And I found this book over there and that one's How to Give Up Plastic. This is a good book to review um, based on what Crispy is doing because what Crispy has shown us is that plastic it's really hard to repair. So Crispy was very clever and found a few things she can do to extend the life of her headphones. Um, but usually plastic is one of the hardest things to fix. And if you want to live more sustainably and do a lot of mending projects, it's usually easier to work with other materials. So this gives you some quick uh, sustainable living tips on how to give up plastic in your everyday life. If you want to find any other resources that interest you or just browse those categories, you can always check our catalog online. Back to crispy. Okay, your epoxy is uh, the glue and the hardener. So I'm just going to mix up a tiny bit of <laughs> uh, 
a tiny bit of glue and you want the equal parts of the hardener. You may also get this at the dollar store or wherever um, in a tube that has two sides and you've got to push the sides equally. The big thing to make sure is that your little globs of glue and hardener are the same size. So maybe from where you are, one is wider than the other because it's, it's been sitting there for a minute. So this side is actually taller. They're actually the same amount. So I'm going to mix these two together. I'm just using an old pencil. You could use a popsicle stick or whatever you have. The big thing I like to do is scrape it off the table and squidge it back down together. Okay, so really I just need a tiny bit and I'm going to put that right on my edge where my headphones line up. This is a bit of a sticky business, so I'm going to line up my bits. I need a little more, a little more on that edge. Okay, now I'm going to line up my two pieces. I'm going to line up my two pieces, and now I'm going to wire them together. So very carefully, this is why I like to have a little piece of tape sometimes, you could tape it a bit, but very carefully, I'm going to put my wire into the hole, and I'm just going to leave a little bit sticking out. I'm going to hold on to that with my finger. And then I'm going to lace this together like a pair of shoes. So down through one hole, it tight and stay lined up back up through the next hole I'd like to share with you a bit of history of headphones today so in the 1800s a fellow named Ezra Gilliland invented the telephone switchboard and in doing so found that there was a need for some type of headphones and so also invented the first set of headphones, which weighed over 10 pounds. They consisted of an earpiece connected to a telephone, connected to another giant box on, that would rest on their other shoulder with a microphone in it. So that was the first one. But then in 1891, a French engineer named Ernest Mercadier developed the first set of in-ear earphones. So similar to what we'd see today with the wires and the little earbuds that go into our ears. And he was also the first one to suggest putting rubber on the earbuds to reduce the discomfort from friction when they're inside of your ears. But it took about 100 years for those to catch on. Then in 1910, engineer Nathaniel Baldwin created the first set of headphones that are similar to the ones that Crispy is repairing today, with the larger size earpieces and the band over the top. And Nathaniel built these at his kitchen table. Investors were not at all interested in this invention. Um, so Nathaniel took them to the Navy and they were super interested in this, mostly because they didn't require an outside power source. And so they ordered a hundred pair right off the bat, not realizing that Nathaniel was creating and designing these at his kitchen table. I'm going to take any remaining epoxy off the table and just put it into that joint. You can see on the back the wire is the speaker wire is or the headphone wire is within my wiring jaw. And I'm just gonna let that cure for 15 minutes. And I'm making sure I'm not gonna have it at a funny angle. I'm gonna make sure it's where I want it. After that cures and it's more so solid, I'm gonna come back with more wire 
to overlap it and I'm going to add more glue to in just a minute. Okay, so now that the epoxy is mostly dry, you can see my stuff on the table. Oh, that's very sticky. So it's mostly dry. So that'll be a little more solid for me to work with. So now I'm going to cut a little bit more wire. Wing. I just want to make sure because these because headphones get a lot of wear and tear. Um, my kids use these headphones, so there's a lot of push and pull on the. There'll be a lot of wear and tear on that repair, so I just want to make sure by that it's got a little bit of flexibility. So I'm just going to stick my wire and embed the end inside there. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this wire around that whole joint. I'm wrapping fairly tightly because I want to protect the joint as the kids are wearing it or bumping it that it's got a little bit of plasticity. Epoxy can be quite rigid. So if this was just an epoxy joint with nothing to reinforce it, it could potentially break. Again, just the glue would snap. So this way we're going to rely on the wires, a little bit of flexibility. I'm going to go ahead and tuck the second part in. pokey edge for my kids to poke themselves on. Pull that through and then I'm going to snip off the extra. Now, there's a Japanese form of repair. Oh, let's look, I've got actual wire sticking. Um, the Japanese art form of repairing things visibly, and now in America we just call it visible mending, um, because the repair itself should add to the beauty of the thing, the intrinsic beauty of the stuff. So we're going to do a little bit of that now. I'm just going to make a little bit bigger puddle of glue. Okay, and hardener. I'm going to mix those two together really well. And then what I'm going to do is take that uh, mica powder. You could use glitter or um, glitter or any color of mica if you wanted to do this. I'm just going to add a little bit of that powder. a little bit was that like an eighth of a teaspoon to the epoxy and then I can mix it right in and look it changes the color of the epoxy so here's a white piece of paper you can see so instead of being yellow tinted the epoxy is now gold tinted with that mica powder now the epoxy is also pretty runny, so when I put this on the next layer, it's going to run around a bit. I'm going to babysit it. And what I mean by that is I'm just going to keep my eye on it and make sure that the um, glue stays on the wire. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the whole wire. I'm going to put it in the holes that I drilled. And I'm going to put it on the sides. So this this one you need a little bit more epoxy when you're mixing it up. And on the back, whoops. So, epoxy that part too. So all my wire edges are going to be contained inside the epoxy, so there's not going to be anything to poke anyone. And my kids are not infants. I wouldn't give this to infants. My kids are all 10 and up, basically. So. This way, all of that wire is covered in my nice gold epoxy. Again, I'm going to make sure when it's drying that it stays in the... Like, look, this one's a little bit... That other fix is pretty good, but it's not as solid. 
because there's a new, my new method. Let me make sure you can see it. See that up there. You can see it there. And a nice headphone shape, a nice circle. So what I'm going to do for the 15 minutes, now maybe you have five minute epoxy and you don't have to babysit as long as I do. But for the 15 minutes that this is drying, I'm just going to keep coming. Because it is a liquid, it's going to run to the bottom. So I'm going to keep coming in and flipping it over and just touching it up to make sure it is solid. So that's what I did on this one. You can see a little bit of the gold, but lots of this epoxy ran off. So I'm going to put another layer on there. The other thing I could do is use my gaff tape. If I'm worried about anyone poking themselves on this, I could also just cover it with the gaff tape to make sure. And then that will make the repair disappear. You could also use some fancier tape like I did on the other one to make sure the repair is actually seen. I'm going to cut a little bit bigger piece of tape. This tape, uh, it's, it's called gaffer's tape. It's uh, like duct tape, but it's cloth, so it's got a lot of flexibility to it. Um, the way that we fix these, they're still fairly adjustable, which is good for the many sizes of heads in your household. And again, the big thing is to make sure you don't monkey with the wire because the wire is what makes them work, right? Now, I wouldn't do this repair on headphones that um, had any wire damage because they don't work. So then why would you keep them? Um, or they would require some other electrical repair, which we're not covering today. So I'm just going to, on this pair, show you that you can actually make the repair more or less invisible. The thing I don't like about putting tape on a headphone is um, you'll probably eventually get some hair stuck in that tape and that's not comfortable. So the epoxy is a really good method there. So now on this one, our repair has become basically invisible. Look, now I can wear these pairs of headphones. Just kidding. Um, yeah, because we have a bunch of these just the kids get a little bit rambunctious and putting it down and that plastic part snaps but the headphone is perfectly workable it still recognizes sound it still recognizes microphone so this little repair is just going to make that plastic part just like new okay let's take a look on the one on the table so you can see at the top you don't even see any gold now because the gold has run down to the other side so i'm going to flip it over so i only have to do this for about 15 minutes until that glue is solid enough now it does say that it, the glue is set in 15 minutes. Mine says right on the front there, 15 minute cure. But I find it's still a little bit tacky after 15 minutes. It will probably still take another three or four hours. So I probably plan on using these the next day. Um, and that's it. That's how I repaired my headphones. So now these are workable again and they don't have to go to a landfill. They can be reused. So it's a little bit lumpy, but it works just fine. So good luck with your repair. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Fix It Friday. And I hope your headphones are just as good as new, if not cooler. Maybe you will go with the rainbow tape. I like the rainbow tape. And we hope to see you next time on Fix It Friday. It's been Crispy at the Saskatoon Bubble Library. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye, friends.